Today's lecture is going to be on the dreaded subject of occlusion. And I know a lot of people are intimidated by the subject of occlusion because it's on the boards and it can seem a little bit confusing when they throw these weird questions at you. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the picket fence. And this is a method that you can use to help yourself to answer these questions a little bit easier. And so we'll go through what the picket fence is, how to draw it, and then how to use it. Okay, this is the picket fence right here. It's basically a diagram of the upper and lower teeth uh, in occlusion. And they call it the picket fence because you start off drawing it by drawing uh, just straight lines. And so we're going to start off by drawing nine vertical lines. And this is going to be the top. And so if you look here, you'll see there's a little bit more space between some of these lines, like these lines, than there are between these lines, for example. And that's because these are going to be the third molar, the second molar, the first molar, and they have more cusps to draw in uh, than these other teeth do. Okay, step two, we're going to draw in the tooth type. So third molar, second molar, first molar, premolar, premolar, canine, lateral incisor, and central incisor. And if I'm moving too quickly, you know, um, in the presentation, feel free to just pause it and um, catch up. Okay, step three, we're going to draw two cusps under the, th the three molars. Okay, so there's one cusp and there's a second cusp. There's one cusp, there's a second cusp, and so on. And then we're going to draw the cusps on the rest of the teeth. So premolars, we're going to just draw the cusps in and then proceed over to the central incisor. Okay, the next step is we're going to draw another nine vertical lines on the bottom. And we're going to start at the third molar here. Now there is an exception to this rule, okay, because traditionally each line comes down off of a cusp. Okay, and so you'll notice in the first one we draw a straight line and then we come over two cusps and that looks like it's going to be the third molar right there. And we draw that second line down there. And then the third line, you notice we didn't come straight down off of here. We pushed it off to the distal a little bit. And this is going to be the first molar. So the reason we did that is because this kind of represents the distal cusp right there. All right, so we, we're going to draw the rest of the lines and fill in the tooth type. So we've got the third molar. The second molar, here's that first molar. Remember we set that line off to the distal just a little bit and uh, that helped us to see that there's a distal cusp in here. Okay, so you'll get some questions on occlusion of class two, um, angles class two. And this is not too bad actually because if you've drawn the picket fence, all you have to do is shift everything on the bottom back one slot. Okay, so if we start on the maxillary central incisor, we just draw a line down, one, two, three, four, etc. Keep going. And then when we get back here, we're going to connect the third molar. So we have an easy, easy template for class two occlusion. And I go through a question, I think, at the end of the lecture on a typical class two um, occlusion type of question you'll see on the boards. All right, here's a question for you. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to have a question and then I'm going to have an answer on the next slide. So I'm going to kind of just go through this quickly. So you might want to pause on the question, kind of think about it, maybe draw out your own picket fence and um, answer the question yourself and then proceed to the answer. All right, so which teeth occlude with only one tooth in the opposing arch? Okay, so we can come to the picket fence and we can take a look and the answer is the maxillary third molar. So if you see here, it's only occluding with one opposing tooth and then the mandibular centrals over here are only occluding with one other tooth. Now you have to be careful on the, on the exam because one of the options is gonna be the mandibular third molar. But if you come look here, you can see that 
the third molar on the bottom is actually occluding with two teeth on the upper. So don't get tricked by that one. Okay, so kind of like the format I'm going to do is just go through some of the upper teeth, some questions on the upper teeth, and then some questions for the lower teeth. So starting with the maxillary lateral, uh, right here, it's marked as incisor 2. So the maxillary lateral opposes the incisal edge of which teeth, or incisal edges of which teeth. So go ahead and pause it, figure that out, and I'm going to go to the next slide now. Okay, the maxillary lateral opposes the incisal edge. Let's come here to the picket fence. The incisal edge of the mandibular lateral right here and canine. There we go. Okay, so let's come take a look at this picture. Here's the central. Here's the lateral. Same thing as the picket fence. Okay, so we're going to see that it opposes the incisal edge of the mandibular lateral and canine. But here's just a little fun fact for you. Um, note that the maxillary lateral tooth opposes no teeth at its incisal edge right here. See, there's no teeth opposing its incisal edge. So these um, cusps are actually um, going to be interacting with embrasures here. You can see that. And this is a picture too. This is a good one to know. You know, um, you should probably be able to draw this one out also um, because you can't really, the picket fence doesn't really give you a good front view of the teeth and this can actually help to answer a couple questions. So maybe draw out this one too. A maxillary canine. So we're right here. The cusp tip of the maxillary canine is in direct alignment with which anatomical item? Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, take a look at it, and I'll move on to the next slide. Okay, so it's going to be in alignment with the facial embrasure of the mandibular teeth. Okay, maxillary premolar. So we're right here. The maxillary premolar opposes which teeth? And you know, this is a pretty common type of question that you'll get on the boards, and it's not too bad of a question to visualize yourself, but you know, it's made a lot easier if you have a diagram that you can kind of look to and um, things go a lot quicker and you can have more time to work on the other more difficult questions. Okay, it opposes, so we're right here, the maxillary premolar. It's going to oppose the first premolar and the second premolar. And I've got a picture up here that kind of shows a, a view through the teeth, how they're occluding. So you can kind of see that the premolar is definitely opposing the first and second premolar. Okay, here's an exception. For any maxillary premolars, when you get questions about the lingual cusps, um, the picket fence is going to not be accurate. So we don't want to use the picket fence for any questions regarding the maxillary premolars and the lingual cusps. Stay tuned to the end of the lecture and uh, I'll explain that a little bit more. All right, so maxillary premolar. Here we go. It opposes. So I think I kind of jumped the gun on that one, but the uh, so the maxillary pr second premolar opposes the mandibular second premolar and the mandibular first molar right there. And you can kind of pause it and take a look here if that helps you out too. Okay, maxillary posterior teeth. All right, I've got two questions here. Okay, so here's the posterior teeth. The buccal cusps of the maxillary posterior teeth oppose which anatomical items of which teeth? And then the lingual cusps of the maxillary posterior teeth oppose which anatomical items of which teeth. So pause it, figure that one out, and I'll move on to the next slide now. All right, so here we have the buccal cusps of the maxillary premolar, or maxillary molars, and as we see here, they're going to oppose grooves and embrasures, meaning buccal grooves, not central grooves. So here we're going to be opposing some 
buckle grooves, buckle grooves, and then here you see we're opposing an embrasure and then some buckle grooves. Okay, for the lingual cusps, we're just gonna treat these as if they're the lingual cusps. And so the lingual cusps of the maxillary posterior teeth oppose marginal ridges and central and distal fossa. So if we look at this tooth as if it's a lingual, it's sitting, it's gonna be sitting right there on the groove, central groove right here, central groove. A maxillary uh, first molar. The mesial buccal cusp of the maxillary first molar opposes which anatomical item of which tooth? And then a second question, the distal buccal cusp of the maxillary first molar opposes which anatomical item of which tooth? So pause it, figure that one out, and I'll move on to the next slide. Okay, if we look here, the mesial buccal cusp of the maxillary first molar opposes the buccal groove of the mandibular first molar, and then the distal buccal cusp of the maxillary first molar opposes the distal buccal developmental groove of the mandibular first molar. So we see how helpful the picket fence is in um, answering these questions for us. It really helps things move a lot faster. Now, you shouldn't just, with, having said that, you shouldn't just be um, banking on, you know, the picket fence. You should have an understanding of how how things work without having to look at the picket fence. But the picket fence is just a method to kind of speed things along. Okay, mandibular centrals. So here we go. The mandibular centrals oppose which aspects of which teeth? And then the ma mandibular centrals contact which teeth during protrusion and lateral protrusion. So think about that and let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so earlier I mentioned this picture is kind of helpful for answering some of the questions, specifically, you know, the ones on the, the central incisors, the laterals, and canines. So the mandibular central opposes the maxillary central only, okay? And which aspect, though? So if we come up here, here's the mandibular central incisor. You see it's only occluding with the, cent with the maxillary central incisor. And this central is going to be occluding with the distal incisal aspect. Sorry, the distal incisal aspect of the mandibular central is going to oppose the lingual fossa. So here's the distal part of this tooth, right? and it's going to be occluding with the lingual fossa on the maxillary central. So you can't really see that too well on the picket fence, so that's why it's kind of good to have just a general understanding of how things are fitting together. And then um, in protrusion, you're gonna be contacting the maxillary centrals. The mandibular first premolar, so right here, the buccal cusp of the mandibular uh, first premolar contacts which anatomical feature of which tooth. Okay, so here we go. It's going to be contacting the mesial marginal ridge of the first premolar. We could also say the distal marginal ridge of the canine. Okay, so we're on the mandibular... Let's see, man, the mesial buccal cusp of the mandibular molar. Okay, so we're on the mandibular molar. And so just ignore this. This should be mandibular first molar. All right, so the mesial buccal cusp of the mandibular molar opposes which anatomical parts of which teeth? So no, I'm asking about teeth, not uh, just a tooth of which tooth. So the mesial buccal cusp of the mandibular molar opposes the marginal ridge of the same numbered maxillary molar, so the first molar, and the distal marginal ridge of the tooth mesial to it. So this this is language that the boards loves to use. You'll see stuff like that on the boards all the time. You know, they're not gonna specifically say which tooth it is, or kind of you have to be able to visualize in your head, okay, what's mesial to this, 
what's well, distal to that. Okay, so here's the class two picket fence. So we just remember move everything back a line. We start on the central incisor and just draw the lines down. So here's a question for you. In a patient with a class two division one angle occlusal relationship, in maximum intercuspation, the mesial buccal cusp of the mandibular second molar articulates with which part of which tooth? Okay, so we would find the the second molar down here, we'd find the right cusp, which is the mesial buccal cusp. And now let's go to the next slide. All right, so if we find the second molar and then we find the, me the mesial buccal cusp, it's going to be articulating with the central fossa of the maxillary second molar. So you see, those aren't too bad. You just gotta, um, those are a little harder to visualize, and so that's where the picket fence really uh, comes in handy. Okay, exceptions. With the maxillary premolar, the lingual cusp, remember that that lingual cusp leans mesially. And so if we treat this as the lingual cusp, it looks like it's gonna hit down here on the marginal ridges, and that's not the case. So the lingual cusp of the maxillary premolar contacts the distal fossa of their respective premolars. So for example, the maxillary second premolar, that lingual cusp is going to occlude with the distal fossa of the mandibular second premolar. So if this was the cusp, remember it's leaning kind of mesially, and so it's actually gonna occlude with the premolar below it in the distal fossa. So if we come here so the first premolar, that lingual cusp is actually pushed to the mesial a little bit, so it's going to occlude with the distal fossa of the first premolar. It's not going to occlude with the marginal ridges, so make sure that you don't uh, get confused about that. And then here's another one. In a cusp to fossa um, relationship, contacting relationship in intercuspation, the maxillary first premolar is most likely to articulate with the mandibular first premolar. And again, this is due to the lingual inclination of the cusps. And then this is just uh, like a drawing I threw up because I found this one helpful when I was taking my boards. Um, this is a picture of the teeth if you're looking through the back of the head. And we've got the supporting cusps, non-supporting cusps are easy to visualize here. And so if you just draw a W and then an M, this will represent the upper teeth and then the lower teeth. And then you can do it for the other side. So this is the right side of the mouth and this is the left side of the mouth. And here I wrote each cusp has a buccal and lingual incline which interacts differently during working and non-working movements. Now I haven't talked at all in this lecture about working or non-working movements. I'm going to have another lecture for that probably. But these um, these diagrams make it easier to visualize. You know, if if the jaw is moving in a working movement or in a non-working movement, which cusps are going to be interacting and which inclines are going to be interacting. So that's it for um, the picket fence. You guys, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. Make sure that you like the video and then uh, comment down below and then also subs make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching everybody. Good luck studying. Bye.